way, deep south, out of space, dirty south, ballin', small batch creativity, time to show them, original art, dope shit that you gon' like, American South bringing that creative life, yeah. All right, y'all, in this video, we're gonna make this neck look and feel oh. awesome. Also, how to contour this sexy body and give it those curves. <laughs> then we're gonna take this and this and unite them together. Yes, we're gluing the neck and I'm scared as crap. All right, y'all, let's get started. We're gonna roll the neck and make these frets look a lot better. The tools I'm using for this, pretty simple. Razor blade to roll the neck. Little piece of sandpaper, roll the neck, and then one of these little files to get around the fret. All right. When you get these necks, they are just slapped together with a very hard edge. What the razor blade does is allows you to skim off that sharp edge on the side of the neck. It um, is the first process in kind of rounding out and smooth and making it feel good. So what I'm doing on these is I'm taking it from the fret and I'm sliding it right on the tip of that edge all the way down, trying to keep a smooth motion. If you jitter a little, it may kind of stab that corner and it's just going to be more you're going to have to peel off. As you go, you'll start seeing the white stuff from the binding come off and you'll start seeing that curve. You're going to want to do this down the whole neck and you'll start seeing the edges soften. In this next part, I take a piece of 1200 grit sandpaper and cut it into two little strips. They're going to fit between the frets to sand these corners. Now for this, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of angling the sandpaper and just rubbing it while keeping the sandpaper off the actual fretboard until I get a nice curve. What I'm liking about this not so good guitar neck I received is that by doing these little things, by sanding all these little parts of the neck exactly how I like them, it's starting to really feel good in my hands. It's starting to make sense that this is gonna be a pretty decent playing instrument. All right, so y'all are gonna to need to sand your worries away because this next step is a lot harder. Get the masking tape out, crack your knuckles, because we're gonna to try to do these frets. Oh boy. So what this tape's gonna do is give you just a little layer between any mistakes you might make when you're trying to carve out these frets. It's like whittling metal. So, you know, it slips and slides. A simple little easy thing to do when you get to the smaller frets is just tear or cut the tape in half, flip it around, use the straight edge part on each of the frets. You wanna continue doing this and make sure you got everything protected because we're gonna pull out the diamond, the diamond. All right, this is the diamond file. You can get them anywhere. Um, I got this whole set for dirt cheap. What you're gonna wanna do, you're using these to round off the fret. You're gonna kinda sand off the frets. Right now the frets look like lobbed off coat hangers. All right, when they slam these coat hangers in these necks, there's a very sharp point on the ridge. So you're just gonna work it away. You're gonna file it until it's just rounded enough. And you can feel it with your fingers. You can feel that you're not getting poked so you want to keep doing this down the whole neck. Um, I skid out all over the neck and scratched all the frets, but it's no big deal because you can fix the frets later. Take your time on this and get everything feeling nice. All right, next we're going to have to take this body, contour it out with the DIY kits. They don't do nice curves, so we want to give it some decent curves. Uh, the tools I used for this was a saw rasp, which allows you to angle out those curves. I also used I used a mahogany wood filler. You can use spackling or anything since I'm going to paint this. It's not going to matter. And lastly, back to the sandpaper. All kinds of grits until you get the thing smooth. Let's do this. So this kit came with horrible curves cut into it. It looked nothing like an SG's contour. So it took a lot of time and really drew out and tried to make sure I got the curves I wanted on it. I also paid a lot of attention to the center line when you look down the body, making sure that is straight when you look at it from the side. So it held the body in place 
and started to lightly rasp it to get the feel of the rasp. Um, it's a little awkward at first, but once you get going, it just starts eating away at, at a perfect angle. You want to cut until you get to your pencil line. So you're just watching the top and bottom cutting until you get to that pencil line, and then it gives you this beautiful, beautiful contour. For me as an artist, this was fun because it's like sculpting. So you're basically sculpting this piece of wood into a beautiful guitar. I really took my time on this and looked at it from every angle while it was rasping away the body. You start seeing how these nice angles really make the look. The horns on this thing were difficult for me because I didn't have a good wood file set, but you're going to need to get something small to work in the tiny areas of these horns and get them looking nice. But you can see with just that little work, the thing is looking pretty damn good. All right, we're gonna put on the wood filler. There's all kinds of things you can use for this. I really had no idea what I was buying, so I ended up with this super thick wood filler. So mine may look a little like cake icing. So with this, I rubbed it in all over the guitar, kind of pushing it into the grains and working it in anywhere it was rough, anywhere there was dents from me banging it around. I rubbed this all over until it looked like a, like a beautiful chocolate guitar. Okay, now it's sanding, sanding, sanding. Um, wear a mask, go outside if you can. Try to be safe with this stuff. I started with a 180 grit to get off the wood filler and then went up to around 220 and then 320, I believe. We're gonna sand it more once we stick the guitar together. But as you can see, it's looking nice. And the wood filler made the surface smooth. All right, this last part for this episode, we're going to glue this neck into here. It's haunted me. I'm afraid to do this part. Tools we're gonna to use for that, clamps, and bloop, wood glue. So let's do this. Wish me luck. With the help of my boys, we ran through kind of putting it together before we actually put the glue on it and make sure all the pieces fit. You want to put your wood glue on all the sides that come in contact with each other. So you want to put it all on the neck, bottom, and sides, and then you're going to want to with a brush, put it everywhere on the inside neck pocket. Oh man, it's time to put this neck on. So with clamps and blocks ready, I stuck the neck in, pushed it down, tried to get all the wood contacting itself. Then I tossed in the little block I had made to fit in the pickup spot, which is gonna hold down the brace on the front side. Then we get to the clamps. Uh, didn't go as planned. We had planned it out, didn't go that way. We were able to finally get a different set of clamps on there the way I wanted it on there, and it was braced well, all the wood was contacting, and I just might have glued on my first guitar neck. Hell yeah. I think that is gonna be it. <laughs> And then you shouldn't have started it. I gotta talk. All right, we gotta let this dry. Um, there's a tiny little gap on the back here. It's as tight as it can go without breaking my wood. Uh, we're gonna see how this goes. I guess we'll wait. Oh, that's the wrong way. I guess we'll wait maybe an hour, something like that. All right, we're gonna take this off. Oh. There wasn't a lot of wood for stuff to be glued onto. This uh, kit was pretty bad, but we're gonna try anyway. So hold this. Oh yeah! Holy crap! Hey man, we did it. Thank y'all for watching. Tune into the next episode coming soon.